Let me tell you about another story that is all around the Internet. It is bizarre. A report apparently prepared for Prime Minister Putin by Russia's Foreign Intelligence Service circulating in the Kremlin states that the German Chancellor, Angela Merkel, has now become the latest in a growing line of Western leaders to make a surprise visit to Afghanistan this month following visits by President Barack Obama, British Prime Minister David Cameron, French President Nicolas Sarkozy. Only Sarkozy's trip was concealed, as he was already in India on a state visit when he was rushed, apparently by U.S. military aircraft, to the Afghan war zone. Why the sudden rush of these powerful leaders of the Western world to Afghanistan? This report continues. Directly view the discovery by the U.S. military scientists of what is described as a Vamana, entrapped in a time well that has already caused the disappearance of at least eight American soldiers trying to remove it from the cave that it has been hidden in for the past 5,000 years. A Vamana is an ancient flying machine. Sanskrit depicts it with different pictures. It's truly an amazing story. But could it be one of those Internet myths? Well, up next, Stephen Quayle joins us. We'll talk with him about that on Coast to Coast AM. And welcome back to Coast to Coast. I'm George Norrie. A Vamana is a mythical flying machine described in the ancient mythology of India. References to these flying machines are very commonplace in ancient Indian texts, even describing their use in warfare as well as being able to fly within Earth's atmosphere Vamanas were also said to be able to travel into space and travel submerged underwater as well. There is a very strange story that is out there on the Internet that talks about a Vamana being discovered in Afghanistan in a cave, in a hole. I thought we'd bring Stephen Quayle in here. Michael Cremos talked about these cases before, too. Stephen, welcome back. How are you? Ah, good, George. Thank you. What a timely, timely story this is to break because the world's leaders are getting ready to make the grand announcement. The grand announcement will be that obviously we're not alone. We're being visited. But the Vimanas are even a more compelling story because even going back to uh, the time of Babylon and the Chaldean Empire, they stated, let me just give a statement, we'll, uh, a statement, we'll go from there. The privilege of operating a flying machine is great. The knowledge of flight is among the most ancient of our inheritance, a gift from those from upon high. We received it from them as a means of saving many lives. Now, what's fascinating is whether you're reading it in Sanskrit, whether you're reading it in cuneiform, whether you're reading it, uh, talking about it, there are thousands of pages, not only on the fact that Vimanas exist, but how their propulsion system works, where they get their raw materials, and they describe in great detail, George, I mean, things that make the Pentagon absolutely salivate with uh, the sheer glee of a new ancient weapon system. I was telling Tom Danheiser before we went on the air, I said the in order to understand the future, it's imperative to have a firm gr- uh, grasp of the past. And what's happening is all the world's leaders, all the world's ambassadors, they're all being, if you will, uh, inoculated, and I'm using that word, into the knowledge that's been controlled by so few for so many years for the purpose of spinning it to enable them to complete their control over the planet. So Vimanas and the flying machines that the Babylonians, the Mesopotamians, and all others have written about, and the weapon systems associated with Gurkha talking about uh, in, in the ancient uh, Vedic test, talking about the power of 10,000 suns, the vitrified cities, meaning cities turned to glass, radioactive skeletons. All this stuff is so old, and it all has a common theme that a a, if you will, supernatural group of beings, entities, came to Earth and gave this technology, and the privilege always flew around. Even Chinese emperors had flying ships in their uh, ancient history. I'm talking 4,000 years ago. This is a strange story, Stephen, in that it falls right on the heels of Secretary of State Hillary Clinton calling every ambassador back to D.C. for a very confidential meeting which I've never heard of before. It's very strange. Well, there are claims that's happened before. I can tell you this, based on what I understand, it has never happened before. The scuttlebutt behind uh, 
uh, all of the different people who are talking out of school that are being threatened with their lives for talking out of school is, is that they're being uh, pretty much primed, if you will, and clued in because they expect, U.S. government expects a mass backlash against the control of the information on uh, flying saucers, aliens, ancient technology, and all that. So basically, you have to call the boys and girls home to give them a pep talk and a prep talk to prepare them to deal with the world leaders because this is going to be a quantum shift in thinking. We're, gonna, we're, we're talking about an event now and multiple events and multiple findings. And, George, what they're admitting to is nothing compared to what they've had for uh, 50, 60, 70 years. Stargates, as you know, the word time well is used in that article. And what you're also seeing behind the scenes, and the Coast uh, family needs to hear this and listeners, is that there is a war going on. The Chinese and the Russians and the U.S. and everybody else is vying for the ancient technology. So there's, if you will, a global hunt-on for any form of the ancient technology. And there has been a group of people that, thank God, have been trying to uh, keep the bad guys from getting this. But I'm telling you, we see on YouTube, we see actual uh, uh, spaceships uh, firing laser beams at each other. We see masses moving into our solar system. We're seeing the effects on Saturn and Jupiter of, uh, when I say electrifying, we're seeing electrical discharges on the planets and the gases. And so we're getting ready to behold some of the most amazing sights and literally the Norway spiral and all the things associated with CERN. CERN is a stargate, and it's interesting that when you're dealing with CERN, the most sophisticated uh, technology yet uh, openly admitted to, and there's stuff that's way beyond that. But the point is they use the god Shiva for, for, for their emblem, if you will, and the emblem of Shiva is, be, you know, what Oppenheimer, one of the inventors of the atom bomb, said he had become the destroyer of, destroyer of worlds. So now we're reading about Vimanas, we're reading about uh, ambassadors being called home, we're being uh, told that all this stuff is going on behind the scenes, and it's right in front of us. And you know, there's a great word, it's called discernment. That's right. Discernment means to be able to tell, to see beyond, to, to go and probe the real reasons. And I think that the real story is yet to come. This is just the tip of the iceberg. So this this story that's uh, all around the Internet, which is bizarre, there's no question about it, it's bizarre, that a Vimana is in a cave, it's been hidden for 5,000 years, soldiers have merely disappeared trying to remove it. Can you believe that story? Well, of course I do. Let me, let me share this. And, and when it's not a question of belief, okay? It's a question of do we, do we get anywhere near the truth of what really has been found? Obviously, the Philadelphia experiment. Uh, have you ever had Al Bielik on your oh, show? Oh, many times. Many, many times. Okay. Boy, he's getting up there in age, too, now. Right. And, and I mean, the, the people, and, and before Phil Schneider was murdered, okay, and mm -hmm. talking about the deep underground military bases, bunkers, and stuff that he worked on, and the alien wars, everything. Again, the thing is, is that it, it, we've been so inculcated with basically lies and diversion, and I would say perversion of the truth, that now that the ancient technology, you know, the web bots are talking about secrets revealed. They're talking about the hidden technology. I think Cliff High uses the word space goat farts, things that are out of the realm of most people's comprehension. And, and this is one time, George, where everyone's going to have to basically get out of the box, the dumbed-down television, and start to read a little bit of history, just like what you were reading the background on the Vimanas. It's so astonishing that India has its brightest scientists recreating many of the actual compounds that are used. I mean, they're talking about graphite rods. They're talking about mercury. And what's fascinating, they're talking about cold fusion. That's why you're seeing platinum and palladium uh, absolutely exploding in price. They're two of the rarest uh, sure. precious metals out there, but it's because they're used in this. So we're talking about red mercury. Remember years ago, you and I did a show on red mercury. That's right. Now, though though they don't disclose where this cave is in Afghanistan, I'm beginning to wonder if it's pretty darn close to the military man you had on our show years ago who found that giant. Absolutely. By the way, it's ironic you would say that. I just received an email from him at 939 tonight. That okay? is strange. And, it, and so I think your timing and is, is just, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those time-based important points. The, the thing that's interesting is, is that when you find this type of technology, 
you also find giants. I broke the story from Iran, and, and I want to share this. The Iranians are basically not backing down. They're going to bring out some of the most uh, astonishing skeletal finds. You know, the number one question I get on giants, and you cannot separate the technology from the giants. And as the Babylonian text says, that they were given the ability to fly in these machines from those who came from heaven came to earth, or from, from, you know, from uh, uh, heaven. In other words, the fallen angels, the gods of the Sumerians, as the Pentagon refers to them. There is some inscriptions in this cave where this Vamana is supposed to be that claims that the rightful owner was a prophet called Zora Esther. Uh, he was Persian at the time. That's bizarre because he was real. Well, and there's a whole religion, Zoroastrianism. I mean, for the record, Persia uh, uh, did not, uh, you know, embrace Islam until, you know, not, not too long ago, uh, maybe a thousand years or so. But Zoroaster was very interesting because they worshipped the god Mithra, and it was Mithraism, M-I-T-H-R-A-I-S-M. And Zoroaster was basically a very, very knowledgeable guy. I believe he was most likely... A, a, a hybrid, a, you know, fallen angel, earth woman, because the knowledge that these guys possessed is like the priesthood. It's kind of like the Illuminati bloodlines. They absolutely claim a divinity to the fallen angels and base their control of the information and the true artifacts of history and the true technology. It's just like Michael Cremo, Forbidden Archaeology. Not probably, if, if people would realize how much evidence, and you know, Forbidden Archaeology is probably one of the best books in the world out there for detailing case. I believe Michael did a beautiful and brilliant job. David Childers, you've had uh, mm-hmm. Hatcher Childress on your show. He's written an amazing book on, on the ancient technology and the anti-gravitational uh, propulsion systems of this stuff. And we can talk about the Temple of Saqqara, actually the Pyramid of Saqqara. And you can go in, and you've seen them, George. They have pictures of fighter planes. They have pictures of, uh, they look like uh, uh, Star Wars speeders or speedsters, whatever they call those things. The thing is, is that the technology of the ancients so far surpassed what we're led to believe down the what I call the primrose path of perdition and denial. And this is it. Who controls the true flow of information controls the population. And now we're seeing a uh, return, in my opinion, to the very same political base that the Nazis had. And the Nazis sent out what were called the Ananerbi. And the Ananerbi went all through the world looking for religious artifacts, for the supernatural artifacts. And Hitler was obsessed with India and Tibet. And the scientists, the German scientists, even Dr. Werner von Braun when he was alive, acknowledged the presence of aliens and, and star travel. Uh, the former head of Skunk Works said if the American people ever found out how that we've already been be, uh, beyond the stars, that they'd basically string us up. You know, well, people don't get it that that guy just didn't get drunk at some going-away party. These are men who are in the deepest realms of the world of black physics and of, if you will, forbidden knowledge and forbidden to the public, but well known to them. So they're getting ready to spring something. The ambassadors of the world are being prepped. Everything is going to change dramatically, and this is a huge story. This has legs. Now, the source of that, the the article you were reading, was from a Russian disinformation service. But remember, even in disinformation, you can pick up nuggets of truth. True. And so the nuggets of truth, what you've got to do is put nuggets of truth into a historic context. And if anything, I want people to start to learn to do their homework. And if they'll do their homework, by the way, my new book, I told Tom, is coming out uh, uh, God willing, uh, May 1st, and it's going to call, it's going to be called something like, this isn't the final title, but it's Myths, Monsters, and uh, the End Time Technology. Perfect. And we could be right in the middle of all of this, Stephen. Stay with us. We're going to take some phone calls with Stephen Quayle, whose website, stevequayle.com, is linked up right now at coasttocoastam.com. We're reacting to a bizarre internet story. That says an ancient flying machine, Vamana. We've talked about them before in the program. Matter of fact, I was on the History Channel's Ancient Aliens talking about these things. Uh, I do believe that civilizations of the past had high technology anyway. But they say that it's been found in a cave, and we're trying to get it. But we just can't pull it out. That's weird. Anyway, we'll take your phone call.